June 27, 2022, uh, Calvin County, Calvin meeting on uh, John Bennett, you know, and we just give a case for you. Yes, sir. Lord, for your presence, we just give you thanks. Uh, give us the wisdom to do these things that are best for the people of this county, Lord, and that we all we do is make glorified you. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. 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 So moved. Second. Uh, second and further discussion. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, likewise, aye. Do <coughs> uh, we have any uh, public comment on the agenda? Anyone have any comment on the agenda? Hearing okay. none, we will move down to public comments on other matters. Anybody <coughs> have any comments? Good evening, and uh, thank you for having me. Let me first of all apologize. Um, Thank you so much for having me. Um, I want to first of all apologize because I missed the last meeting uh, due to some foreseen circumstances. But thank you for um, allowing me to come back and reschedule uh, this, this time to be with you. Um, I'm representing the Tri-County Health Network um, that's actually a part of uh, uh, TRMC, the Regional Med Medical Center, and <coughs> the outreach arm for um, the, the hospital. And the Food Policy Council is a new initiative that we're trying to implement throughout the Tri-County area. In fact, when I leave here, I've got to rush to Bamberg County because we have a food gathering there. And I gave you a copy <coughs> of um, what will happen at a food gathering so that you would be able to see it. And I think I also left copies of um, the CHIP, which is the community health improvement plan, there will be another one that'll be coming out. And so uh, I wanted to you to also see what would happen in those, in those food gatherings. So what is the Food Policy Council? It is an opportunity for all the stakeholders in the community, from local government, farmers, um, people who receive SNAP and WIC, um, anyone in the community who has an interest in food. And if you, everybody, food touches everybody's lives. And so the Food Policy Council is an attempt 
to gather all people that want to serve on the council to help govern um, ways to help govern ways to create policies that will give a healthy access to more of the citizens and rural communities. Um, the Food Policy Council is actually statewide. So um, this is a new initiative to bring um, the Food Policy Council to this area. So uh, what am I responsible for? I've met with uh, Mr. John and explained to him um, what, what the county would be, what their role would be, which is to help us navigate the policies around food. Um, also, he gave me some insight into getting farmers involved because as you know, we really economically right now, it's actually probably cheaper to buy directly from a farmer than it is to go into a grocery store. So we want to make sure that everybody has a voice in how um, food access is determined. Um, not too long ago, we were strapped without a grocery store. And so that would be something that the council would be able to help. Um, all the other areas, the outlying areas, Fort Mott, Lone Star, all the other um, communities who are considered to be uh, food deserts where there's not a grocery store within miles. So that having that kind of input from all the people in the community who have a stake in um, how, food is, how food is able to be distributed throughout the county. So that's in a nutshell what the Food Policy Council would do. And it would be made up of um, citizens and also um, council, council members if they desire to be on it. And I'll take any questions you have. Uh, Not at this time, sir. Um, what we, what one of the things that um, the organization that has um, responsibility for developing the Food Policy Council, we do the, um, the food distributions and have been doing the food distributions for the community. And so we're looking at ways that we can continue to do that and then gain more information about the community while we're doing the food distributions. So not at this time, we don't, we don't have any. Are y'all, um, like, do y'all coordinate? I know we have a few food distribution through Harvest Hope or something in mm -hmm. town. So do y'all, but that happens over there by, behind the scenes business. Do y'all work with them in any kind of way? Or are they part of your plan? Or how does that work? Well, we want we want to work with other organizations. That's um, what, what typically what happens with the Tri-County Health Network is we go into the community and actually do the distributions for them through um, grants that we've gotten and through the cooperation actually with St. Matthew. St. Matthew in um, Calvin County has actually probably been one of our greatest supporters in doing those distributions. Our focus is on healthy food, produce only. We don't do um, anything that's not produce because we wanna make sure that people understand, number one, the correlation between um, eating fruit and vegetables and eating more of those things and diabetes, hypertension, and obesity. And one other um, thing that we've added is also cancer. So on our uh, surveys that we do in the community, um, it actually asks if you've been diagnosed with any one of those things. So we try to stay away from a lot of the things that are not healthy. Thank you, Jim. I, I come in today, uh, I think a week or two ago, the council and the administrator uh, issued an emergency abatement against uh, the place that I had. And uh, when I come to find out that a lot of the things that were said about 
what happened. You know what really actually happened on the product. You know what really happened. Uh, statement came up, man did. That, that statement right there would tell you that a man got shot got killed on the property. That did not happen. But that's the way it was written up. When you write a thing and, and you read it and uh, understanding the law and writing the law. Uh, and I also ask the question, how does a, an ordinance get to be adopted? From my understanding that a law, an ordinance get to be adopted, it has to be brought to the attention, read three times, adopted, and so-called amended. This ordinance, when I found out about it, they already had been did, all these things had already been done, and I did not have a chance to come in, and, if it read it three times, I would have a chance to come in and say what I had to say about it, you know, because I think it was unfair, because it was only targeted toward my establishment, which I think that's discriminatory. It was just to my establishment, and none of these things actually really occurred there. And uh, they said the council went into an emergency session and debated this, and they came out with this disorder. Giving the sheriff all his power over private property. I still say my business is a private party on private property. And the sheriff also said that. He did not have the power to even come in and do anything about it. But the council gave him some type of authority, I, I don't know if he made it up, or what, what it is, the emergency thing, or uh, uh, abatement, and came in and actually made us went to a hearing in which the judge ruled for the sheriff. But I came back to where it started. It started here at council, so that's why I come back there, even though I didn't get what I wanted at the, um, at the air, and I have not been charged with any type of criminal activity. So I'm still here, I'm not locked up, I didn't get a ticket or anything. So I'm trying to figure out if I didn't get charged with anything. And a public nuisance, uh, I think, nuisance order has to be read right three times, from my understanding. And that has not been done. But the power that y'all gave the sheriff could not be in effect until it read three times. The nuisance law. So that's why he classified the building that a nuisance. So it had not been read three times. So the power you gave to him would not be in effect. I'm asking the county council right now to go in and reconsider. Hey, let me just ask you one question. Did you go before the magistrate? Yes, I did. Okay, well, what happened with the county council, uh, you know, I can't get into the big you know, on this issue, because the county council, I don't even know your place at. Uh, the county council didn't just up and make a, a rule. Uh, this was brought to us by the sheriff's department, because if you list the stuff that we have here, uh, I think it was seven items. Right. They listed, and that's why we gave them the authority to, to shut it down immediately, because that's what they told us. Yeah, we don't patrol. Okay. And then you were supposed to go before the magistrate. Right. Or whoever. And he was supposed to decide. And we don't make that decision. We just, because they, they, they asked us for that emergency. We didn't pop up and just say we're going to do an emergency on this case. I just want to let you know that. So it wasn't the council. I mean, we didn't blame for it, but the council did what we were asked to do. By the sheriff. Yeah. So, again, and, um, you were supposed to go before the magistrate. And the magistrate and you and the sheriff were supposed to work something out. So I don't know, I still don't even know what happened with that. It wasn't to shut you down. I don't want to shut anybody's business down. But for the information, I won't read it out because right. what, what he gave, I'm sure you familiar with it. Right. And uh, that's what they gave us. Right. The only thing we could go we was sure the sheriff wasn't lying to us on what he, what he brought to us. So that's the only thing I'm saying. And that's what they gave, gave the council. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I can say, a lot of those things that he brought for you did not happen. That sentence was very true. No, Mr. Gates, did you bring that before the judge when you saw him? Hey, look at it. I don't want to play that card, but the white file structure, the reason why he didn't really charge his contempt of court is because he already had a plan to lock me up that night. But the 
It didn't work out that way this week. You were already closed down when it came. Like I said, I wasn't charged doing nothing illegal. No, I didn't charge anything. So you did go in front of the judge? I did okay. do it. Okay. 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 Yeah, that's my, that was my own question. Okay. So the council does not have any authority to look back at the accusations that were brought forth. No. I think, well, what what was the outcome of the hearing? I don't think any of us was at the hearing. I don't, I don't even know what you did. He, he removed the, the shirt. So I said, hey, the chief deputy is back here. So I told him to focus. Yeah, I mean, chief, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 You want to know what was the outcome of the hearing? It was a six. Yeah. I don't want this to turn into a court, though. No, no, no. Yeah. 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 This, this, this should have been yeah. handled at that court. meeting yeah. with the judge. Yeah. It was. So, yeah. I mean, it, uh, so we, we can't rule over a judge. Yeah, we can't. Yeah. 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 <laughs> what I was going to explain is, so we've had the initial, basically, which is kind of like a probable cause hearing. Um, the judge ruled that the emergency existed and to keep the order in place currently. So there's another hearing on the 7th of July, which is the Fifth Amendment hearing, which is kind of the constitutional entry possession type hearing. And then there's a final 30-day hearing, I think, on the 17th. But at this point, the judge is just holding. Basically, the emergency order is upheld by the court. The court has recognized it, and basically, this is his time and our time to put our cases together for and against. Mm -hmm. okay. Matt, so Matt can, can you acknowledge just that uh, Mr. Gates' complaint that uh, it was emergency ordinance and should have had three readings? I think under the auspices of emergency ordinance, yes. and the court upholds that, and I'm sure the sheriff offices does yes. as well. You don't yeah. have to have the one reading. Is that correct? Correct. That was, brought up, that was brought up at the initial yeah. hearing, and the judge. So the requirement for three readings is not applicable here, is that yeah. correct? The, the judge upheld the, uh, the legal term. So, so the, process, the process is ongoing. I thought it was complicated, actually. Yeah. Yeah. But nothing to counsel. Final, right. right. To, to make that ordinance permanent, the user, it would be... The user had to read right. Right. But this ordinance that's in effect currently is just a 60-day temporary order, basically, for you. And now it's in the court's hands. So the judge had our hearing on the 7th or whatever it is coming up. For the fifth amendment, the next time you get to go in front of the judge and explain your facts. What, Mr. Gates, was this explained to you at that at that hearing? At that? Oh, he, he explained to okay. all about the, the follow up with somebody. Okay. So that, that's that's all we're doing is following the law. So I mean, it, it's still ongoing. So I mean, if it was explained, it's not our place to explain it on the second time. Okay, I, all, all I want to do is come back where you started. And yeah. I'll, I'll be glad to talk to Mr. Ah, yeah, I'll finish outside if you need to. Okay, thank you. If you need to carry him on our meeting. Go thank you. I'm with the um, South Carolina Association of Counties. Um, and I was asked to come to just kind of address the uh, questions uh, surrounding uh, potential uh, referendum on uh, questions of uh, a change in the form of county government uh, from the council uh, form of government to the council administrator. Uh, let me begin by just saying that um, very briefly, the difference between the to um, are that with the current council form of government is that uh, as uh, council as a body, you are both the legislative and the administrative um, <coughs> head of government, uh, where in the council administrative form, uh, you as council would be the, uh, you would retain all of the legislative authority that you have to, uh, to address ordinances, uh, to um, address um, uh, individual county uh, policies uh, that you have now, but that the administrative uh, duties uh, would be uh, placed with a professional administrator. Uh, in many ways, you already operate uh, in that form, having um, hired an administrator to um, handle most of the administrative duties. Um, 
that you have now. Um, that is the same for the other five counties that uh, currently operate with the um, council form of government. All of them, um, while uh, council uh, retains an administrative uh, oversight, each of them have hired a professional uh, CAO of some, of some form, whether it is uh, named an administrator or um, a couple of them actually use the word county director. Um, I will note that of the six counties, uh, one county, um, so the county already has uh, given third reading uh, on the question of a referendum uh, changing uh, their form of government to a county administrator that will be on the general election ballot uh, this November. Uh, they have operated uh, like Calhoun County as a council form of government since um, the um, enactment of the Home Rule Act uh, at the end of 1975. Um, yes, go, uh, go ahead and finish and then I'm a, I'll ask. No, I'm, you, you basically put it. Mm -hmm. All right. I will be the first to tell you that I've been on this council for six years. Um, when I first came on here, I really did not know that there were four forms of government. When I found out what we were under, I started looking at how we could get out from under the council form of government. And it really boils down, and you correct me when I'm wrong, okay? In the state statute, it says that as a council form of government, we are both the legislative and the administrative form of uh, uh, branch of government. Yes. Sir. And as such, we are the administrators of the county. Ultimately, yes. U ultimately. So everything that the administrator does is done on our behalf. Yes. Now, currently, we we operate pretty much the same way that council administrator does, but we do it by local ordinance passed by the council back in the 77, 78, 79 time frame when home rule was was being uh, codified. Yes. So um, we're not asking for any more, actually we're not asking for any more by asking to change the form of government. We're not asking much change in how the government runs and what, and what a citizen could expect to come up here and how they were expected to be treated. Now, what we would be doing would be saying that we, are, we want to, do what we're doing, but do it under state statutes as opposed to local ordinance, in my yes. opinion. Yes, in effect, what happens is that the administrator's duties, which right now, I believe, are done either uh, right. through your ordinances or through a contract, right. uh, the administrator's duties would become statutory, Correct. which under the council administrator statute, the administrator's duties are limited to those uh, duties which are provided in statute, which are basically right. the administrator um, oversees the uh, personnel um, uh, of the county that other than those that um, right. uh, work for elected officials or appointed officials. Um, the, the administrator also oversees the, um, the budget, uh, providing uh, council with all of the reports at the beginning of the um, budget process and then overseeing the appropriations once but, it's um, passed. the budget is still passed by this body. Correct? Yes, like because here. the budget is a legislative. And so we're, we're not, we would not be giving up much of our power in doing that any more than we did through ordinance, okay, years ago. And and I want to, I, I want to assure my constituents, okay, um, being the people of my district, that when I ask for this, it's not going to cost them any additional funds. I mean, other than the cost of running a referendum, once that's done, we're not looking at something that's going to add on taxes or anything like that. We're just looking at how we administer, how our county is administered. I would also ask you, and if, and if you, you can correct me if I'm wrong, Power, I've, I've 
heard the word used that we've given up our power. Power implies that we have a certain amount of knowledge, which because we're part-time, we can't have that, not, that level of knowledge in, a, in all of these administrative small decisions, in my opinion. We're not giving up power. We are, we're giving up some of the administrative powers, but along those same lines, we are changing a level of, of uh, accountability, shifting it from us as lay people sitting up here, and we're shifting that accountability to the administrator as well. And I want to assure the people that that we still maintain the power to hire and more importantly to fire the administrator if we're not getting what we're looking for. Yeah. So we're not, am I right, Mr. DeLose? Yes, you are. And, and saying that we're not really giving up our power to do things like pass ordinances, to pass the budget, to approve the budget or disapprove the budget. Uh, in order for the administrator to change categories for, of monies within the budget, uh, how he spend them, he would have to come back to us for budget adjustments. As I guess what I'm saying, John, is as I am, a, I'm retired superintendent of schools. Basically, I was shocked to find out that the, the county ran so differently from the way all the school districts in the state currently run with a, with a head administrator who has the day-to-day -day operations under him. But he must act in accordance with the ordinances, the budget, and, and et cetera, all the votes that are taken by council. Yes. Am I? That's correct. Okay. I just want to make sure and clear that up. And then really what it comes down to is not necessarily questions of authority, it's uh, questions of administration, and uh, what is uh, ultimately every form of government uh, and voter has to ask, what is the most efficient, effective means to provide services uh, for citizens? I want to key in on one word you use there, efficient and subservient to that would be effective. But an efficient government is one where people can walk through those two doors across the hall and get a timely answer to their question and are not told that he does not have the authority to make that decision without waiting till the next time this council meets. And that is particularly important, in my opinion, when we are recruiting major industries and stuff, and those, those captains of, in, of industry, they don't want to be heard, well, you can spend that, five, that $50 million, but you're gonna have to wait you know, two weeks to get an answer on whether you can spend it or not, because they want to know what the position of the county is at that time, and that would be, Certainly, they would have to come for us to for, to us for anything like changing tax structure from, mm -hmm. from yeah. tax to fee in lieu of and all that kind of stuff. We would still have that power. Yes. And, 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 and it's my understanding. And at that point, like I say, though, for day-to-day -day operations, can you, you know, help me with this road going into where I'm going to build this building? That could be handled as an administrative function. What's the money is budgeted by us into the proper categories to do that? And that's my understanding. Yes, it is. Okay. You are correct. I, I would like to add one thing since we are being broadcast, I presume, right? Yes. And just to say that there's more than just these people in this room that are listening to us. But we, I, I don't, I, I think everybody that sits on this on this panel up here, okay, on, on this council, has the best interest of Calhoun County at heart. We're not looking to make strict, fast moving changes. I have been on here for six years. Ever since I learned, ever since I went to my indoctrination and found out about the, fo the four forms of government, I have not been satisfied with the fact that I'm on a council where, where we don't have an administrator who is as accountable 
as I feel like he should be for his decision and, and has, the, has the power, given him the power, to use the budget that we pass the way that I feel like he should be, should have that power. I just like to go on record saying that. Anyone else? Just, just a question for Ken. So on the $50 million that the issue, you yeah. said so we he gets a captain of ministry comes up and says, okay, we have a $50 million expenditure. He makes a decision right then to commit to it. Is that what you're saying? I, I did not, I, we're not committing to the $50 million. I'm just saying that those guys out there are spending big bucks. Understood. And, and, and they might, they <coughs> might have a decision that they need to make. Well, that's a $50 million investment into Calvin County. Correct. That's not us right. Yeah. Million. No, I'm not saying right. us spending the $50 million. I'm saying that guy over there is wanting to put a $50 million investment in the county. Right. And if he can get a more timely decision, because he may go up to a neighboring county, and because they've got council administrator form of government, that administrator may be able to say, yes, I've got money in my budget. I can fix that for you. If he can't get that same response from our county, then he may go to another county just because, I, and, and John, this is out of your, I mean, beyond what you're talking about, but I'm just saying that, that's some of the things that I consider is, you know, timeliness, efficiency, effectiveness, effect, efficient and effective government that is actually <clears throat> within our, our administrator's uh, job description, that he can make those decisions and that he is accountable for those decisions to us. Now, he make the wrong one, or too many of the wrong little ones, mm -hmm. then certainly we have the power to replace him. But I can, I will tell you right now, having been, having sat in the top seat of a, of a, of a bigger budget, school district wise, than we have here, I wouldn't have been interested in doing this job because I wouldn't have had the authority that, that I needed to do the job effectively if I had to wait every time the school board met to, to get answers to my problems. Um, I, had to, I, I, I realized that I was putting my job and at that time my, my teaching credential on the line by the decisions I made, but, but I knew that I was accountable for those decisions. So I, I guess that, that's where I'm coming from. Well, I would say at least look at the history in terms of how we recruited industry and commercial business in this county here before. I mean, it looks like we've done a pretty good job of getting to come in. Those commitments have been made and, and have been approved at the proper time. And well, I would just I say, that, and I, I, I don't know, uh, I don't know that we can look at history. Uh, for us, I, I, I'm going to give you uh, to, to answer that. God put our eyes in, in the in the front of our head so we we look to the future. Okay, He didn't put them in the back of our head, so we can look back in history to get examples. Okay, we can do that, but the fact of the matter is we've got to look at the growth that is and, and the changes that are coming to our community that need immediate attention as opposed to the way it was back in the day when we were totally agrarian, pretty much. We had very little industry, et cetera. Things, things didn't move as fast back then. Um, so I, I, I'm, I'm looking for something that will make us more effective, make us more effective in our jobs. And like I say, we, we can look down the line now, minus one seat, and we, you know, we can guess at who's going in there. And then we know that uh, we got one person who's probably going to be sitting next to me, right? Okay. That being said, we can look now, but this council changes on a dime. Okay. This council changes every has the potential of changing every two years. Okay. And by by saying that, I am a prime example. When I went to the school district, I, I worked there for four and a half years as the superintendent. I put my job on the line. And what it cost, what I won't say it cost me because my, my, my sister called me and congratulated me. 
tax that is a night that the school board voted not to renew my contract. Because basically what she said was you didn't even have to decide when you were gonna retire. You, 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 you're, you're, you don't even have to go home and think about what, when you're gonna retire. But the fact of the matter is I knew what I was putting on the line when I, when I made the decisions for the district that I made and pushed for that. And I wrote a three-two split in my favor for until <laughs> until the, until it changed to a three-two favor against me, and that's how I ended up out there. So I'm not sad. I, I I I've seen it from so many different perspectives. I guess what I'm saying, John. And uh, I appreciate you coming. And if I, I didn't ask you many questions, but I hope you would have corrected me had I made any incorrect statements. I'm a lawyer, so I would have. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to, um, I guess all of us made comments instead of asking you questions, but I just wanted to say I think this form of government would be something similar to a company, the plant manager. I mean, they have made a decision. He had a board of directors to report to, and we gave, gave him those authority, but he didn't do the job. The bottom line is we still have the power. I mean, <coughs> if, 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 am I correct in saying that? Yes. That we, you know, if he didn't do what we wanted him to do, um, I think what we're trying to do, I think, is save a form of micromanaging to where five councilmen, the people don't know who to go to, and if they can go to this this one guy, he don't have to call all five of them. I, you know, I've had even when I wasn't the chairman, uh, I won't call the name, but I had an administrator who called me seven, eight times a day. I wasn't even the chairman. So I'm I'm just saying I think this would be a better fit. But we are throwing it out there to the public. I mean, it's going to be up to them. It's not like we are uh, just throwing something down somebody's throat. And I think that's what we wanted to do when, when I was approached by it. Well, yeah, let the voters call me, and we'll talk to them. I talk to one guy half an hour a day. All right, give them my opinion. I'm not going to force anything on you. But I think what we just do is we think why so many counties have gone that way and why we want to just stay in the, in the, in the, in the dark. That just was, was my thought on it. And, I, and like I told him at the last meeting, I had to decide on, well, we won't decide, but no, we, won't. We, we just will vote to have a referendum on it. We're not, we not going to make that decision on doing that. It'll be up to the public. Yes, by state law, it has to be done by a referendum. Public. I want, want the people to know that. We're not trying to throw anything. And that's why we're having these uh, <coughs> readings and stuff now. We really have a public hearing to show the last one. And we want to have people input on it. That's what we want to be Well, and not only that, James, back to the people's input, state law actually goes so far as to say that we have to have two public hearings on this particular issue, I think. Is, um, is that correct? Uh, no, actually, when when you are uh, proposing a referendum, you don't have to oh, that's have right. a yeah. public yeah. hearing. To propose the referendum, well, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 yeah, but like I say, um, I just want it known that this is not something I realize that our constituents are, this is the first time they're really hearing much about it, it's within the last few weeks. But the fact of the matter, it has been a conversation uh, since I've been on this council, which has been six years, about whether to do it and when to do it. Uh, and um, we're not looking to, see, so I think I'm speaking for all of us, we're, we're not looking to give up the, our ability to run no, the no, I, I, I mean, it's not giving up our power. The book right. still stops here at this council. Right. Our constituents still call us when they've got a problem. Yeah. It and makes more so my administrator accountable for his decisions, right. more so than protect, really the protection of us. Right. Um, I mean, right now we can run the, the stupid decision he makes, we run the Right. It becomes our so, liability. And, and, but he's still protected. Right. Um, well, and like I say, to the average, to, to, I won't say average citizen, I don't know who that is. I mean, I, you know, my doctor, I went and they read my blood work and they say, you're just average. I mean, everything I had was good. You know, when I say good, it was within the average range. So I don't like to say necessarily average, but to the citizens of this county, they're really not going to see a whole lot of difference in the way the county is run 
based on what we've been doing, it's just where uh, where the liability and, and 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 it draws a really clear distinction between what are the administrative duties and what are the legislative duties that we do. If I, if I, if I, right. It's not, and it's not taking away the authority. He can't go make a decision to bring a fifty million dollar project to this county. It's the day-to-day -day operation day -to -day that operation. he doesn't say, well, let me call my councilman and I can let you know whether we can work on this. Right. <clears throat> this. Well, like I say, that's why we're bringing it to the people. Mr. Gloss, let me ask you just one more question. I'm going to be through. Yes, sir. Uh, I already said we didn't have to have a vote here, but we can have a vote here. Well, well sir. Okay. And I, you know, I, I, you know, like I said, I don't want as much public input as I can get. I want to hear what they got to say. And I guess we will hear when they vote. But I still don't want people to be ignorant when they go in the booth and I take as much information as they can get and understand. It would yeah. probably be better. Yeah, that's we did have a vote yet. Very important. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why I'm spending so much time because I do know that we, you know, we do have hopefully people at home watching what we're doing too and we'll listen to why why it's being brought to them. Anyone else have any questions or comments? Thank you, sir, for coming down again. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you. Next time, you put your car on autopilot and just <laughs> <laughs> ran straight. <laughs>
So you go to one location, you find your zoning classification, and you go down and you read through a list of uses, and it, like you said, it'll either say P isn't permitted or it's right. not allowed. Right. Uh, Mr. Chair, when I move this, uh, and I want to ensure people, ensure people understand, we are not changing any size of zoning lines or anything. No, no so like we're just we're just changing the look. Of yes, sir. That that would be a zoning map amendment. This is a text amendment. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I move that we adopt Ordinance 2022-17. Well, second reading. Second. Well, we move and second. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. All those likewise, aye. Okay. Down to the ministry. Do you have anything? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Council. Um, I know that you've met him, but I want to go public with this. Uh, we've got Mr. Michael Montgomery, who is our we've hired uh, for our general counsel. He is with Robinson Gray Law Firm in Columbia. Uh, he is a local uh, homeboy from St. Matthews, Calhoun County. And uh, so we're, we're thankful to have him. Uh, I do want to say for the last time, I want to thank Heath Taylor for his service and what he did to Calhoun County and bringing a lot of knowledge and common sense uh, to, to, the, uh, to the county. Um, the second thing I've got here is uh, I want to thank uh, again Red Rock Development, Calhoun Land Partners uh, for the spec building announcement uh, groundbreaking we had last week. Uh, this spec building will be the largest in the region, uh, just shy of a half a million square foot. Um, and we're already getting questions and requests for proposals on that building, so uh, it's already looking positive there. Um, and then the last thing, certainly I want to remind the, uh, the viewers of our St. Matthew's Fireworks Show uh, will be this Saturday, starting at 6.30, uh, 7 o'clock, uh, we'll have a band, and then the fireworks will come after that. So uh, please be available for that as you can. And that's it for me, Mr. Chair. Okay, anyone else? Band will sponsor by the Tri-County Electric Co-op. Yes, I want to thank them for that. Yes, sir. Anyone got anything else? Anyone from the press have anything? No, sir. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I move that we adjourn. Second. Probably well, move a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. Aye. Those likewise, aye. Thank you, everybody, for coming.